Hi guys, so today I'll be showing my progress so far with the project. So I've got a trainer implemented and a Pokemon. There is no spawning animation yet, but no, right. So you can control the trainer. She has two idle animations for now. I tried to implement other animations, but they were not blending very well. So, so far, two idle animations, very, um, you know, smooth, smooth transaction, no hiccups, and they play randomly. So, we have the idols, we have the walking animation, then when you press shift, she starts running. So then we can switch over to our Pokemon, which is Litten over here. So this is Litten. He has two idle animations as well. So let's just get... So he has the walk animation, which I think is extremely adorable. There we go, that's his idle animation. Uh, he walks much slower than the trainer. So for example, if we go here, this is his walking speed. At, at least it's adorable. You switch to the trainer, yeah, of course she walks much faster than that kitten. So he has the adorable looking walking animation. Then he has the running animation. And he has those two idle animations. There you go, that's the second one. Right, so now for the bugs. Uh, I'm trying to implement a full cycle for jumping. So for example, if you switch to my trailer, she can only um, stand, walk, run. But I don't want trainers to jump, so that's working as intended. Um, trainers can jump, but for Pokemon, strong button, play, there you go. For Pokemon, I want them to jump. As you can see, um, in idle, I mean when they're standing, um, I made it so that they don't jump very high, so at least it's a, a little bit realistic. So they don't, they don't jump very high when, uh, when they're standing in one position. But when they're moving, let's say running, they jump much higher. There we go. Now the problem with this is uh, my animations, uh, I don't know how to set my animations up. So if he's running and you jump, he he's basically running in midair. I do not want that to happen. What I want him to do is animations. Um, there we go. This is supposed to be his um, starting starting animation. So when he starts jumping, uh, you get to see this, hopefully. Then the next one is the middle. The middle is when he is in midair. So this is supposed to happen. This is his end. This is when he's landing. Of course, um, I, I tried implementing that, but it, it doesn't seem to work. So that's one of the bugs, which uh, I can't fix. Then the next one is also has to do something with the jumping. So if you, let's say, if you if you do the walking, you jump, then you hold space. He's essentially falling. He keeps on falling when I'm holding the space bar for the jump. So he's always in this idle animation even if I press shift. And until I release the space bar, he will not stop being from this animation. There we go, I release the space bar. When you jump, that's okay. So this works fine. But from walking, yeah, it doesn't seem too good. 
So yeah, that's far. Um, what was it? Oh yeah, there's another bug. I know I'm talking about a lot of bugs, but uh, this one, this one would be pretty much easier to fix. So for example, let's say um, we were running with a trainer, then we switched directly while doing an animation. This happens. So when we switch, she's still in that animation. So when we switch back, she goes back to normal. Let's say we go to the Pokemon, then go to the trainer. The same thing happens. Now this can be fixed. Um, I guess uh, easier because what will happen is that I would want the trainer to play an animation to spawn the Pokemon so what would happen is that the trainer um, when you will press the spawning key the trainer will stop and she would play the let's say go Pokemon uh, animation so that would stop her animation and she won't be running in one place and the same thing for the Pokemon. So once he spawned, he's is an idol, and then once he's defeated, or when the Pokemon is being returned back to his Pokeball, uh, the animation will start from the idol. So I guess those bugs will be fleshed out. So now for the implementing of the, let's see, the battle system. The battle system is not going to be turn-based, uh, the battle system is going to be action-based. So what you see in Pokémon Tournament, uh, it's going to be quite similar to it, actually very similar to it. So let's say this trainer is a Pokémon, right? So I will have the uh, auto-targeting system, yeah that's what it's called, uh, auto-targeting. So for example, let's give another example, so let's say this I'm a trainer right now let's just say I'm a trainer right now so I'll be going to another trainer uh, let's see they spotted me or I try to talk to them and they want to battle me so you agree to the battle then that cuts in place where it says one trainer versus the next so what will happen um, there'll be an arena the trainers will be behind the arena so the arena will be the blockage only for the Pokemon. So the Pokemon they can't they can't go out of that arena. So and automatically when they spawn in that arena, uh, let's just pretend that that trainer is a Pokemon now. For what I can do just to make this a little bit easier, spawn another one. There you go. So let's say this is. The Pokemon we're going to be fighting so it will automatically target on the Pokemon so that you can't move your camera out of the way so it'll be much easier to target your hits now what would happen is that um, I would have combo hitting just like Pokemon tournament but more uh, let's say more advanced so let's say you're Lidden you have I think you'll be having about how many attack animations did I take Pokemon, Litten, animations. So I have about six attack animations. They'll be all working in a combo. So let's say since you're Litten, you're low leveled, um, you'll be having one or two attacks, I think, one or two. Maybe even one, I'll just make it a combo. So you'll be left clicking for, you know, the basic attack, then uh, double left clicking for, let's see, a double hit. Now, the tricky part is to prevent the spamming, uh, let's say, there will be a dodging system. So while in battle, you'll be pressing the, um, I'll try to configure them to Q and E. So you'll be pressing Q, then the Pokemon he will uh, let's say dodge uh, left when he's press Q and when you press E he dodges on the right side so let's say you're attacking and each attack it has let's say uh, a frame or a couple of frames where it doesn't hit the opponent so it just gives him a chance to evade the attack and what happens is uh, for example let's say you click uh, first uh, let's say you F click for you know the basic attack and when it's doing that attack at the end of the attack if you do not click any other button um, 
it will let's say um, it will delay your movement so you will left click he will swipe his claws then when he's about to finish that animation it will come slower so that the opponent has a chance to attack so let's say you're doing a combo so you left click then you left click again you left click again it did three combos and if the uh, let's say your combo is finished then the opponent like, um, depending on which ground he is either he's on the floor or he's in the air so he'll be stunned a little bit just for a couple of seconds but that will also move him back so there will be a knockback so the opponent will either have to act faster to evade the attack in any way he wants but I haven't implemented that yet or um, he can try and create his own combo or if I would actually implement a blocking system because I know evading with huge Pokemon sounds a little bit strange like <laughs> you know those large Pokemon that are probably bigger as this For, let's just say Charizard like you're having two Charizards I don't think the evading system will work too well but it could still work in close combat because what uh, the thing is that I also want to implement the far range so you'll have the auto targeting so let's say you want to use Ember, so it's already out of targeted. It's going to the to the opponent directly without you know missing the hit. But there is a catch. There is still a catch to it. So it's out of targeted. You hit the whatever button it is for doing the Ember move. It's a fire move. So the fireball it will move to the opponent, but it will not move at incredible speed. So it won't be like you're shooting bullets from a gun there will be some um, let's say it will be a little bit slower so that uh, the opponent has a chance to either evade or block depending on what kind of systems I implement so let's say you shoot a fireball it's it's going a little bit slower of course not as slow as this but so it will be going slower it will be I guess turning a little bit if I can implement that but if not it'll just be going straight straight forward to where it was last targeting to act so you shoot the fireball it's going there it's hitting there but let's say the um, the person is very far away so let's say you'll be all the way here then you shoot your fireball so it'll be going approximately at this speed and if the opponent he dodges let's say he presses E or I mean um, Q or E then the opponent will dodge the fireball will miss now if the fireball is hit of course the opponent again he gets this stun or hit animation and that hit while that hit animation is playing you can approach the uh, your enemy closer and you can combo your attacks yes this is pretty much a Pokemon tournament system but the moves are going to change depending on how um, how your Pokemon evolves. So let's say you are at level five, you have two basic anime, uh, two basic combos. Then let's say at level ten, you have about um, yeah about three or four combos, and level seventeen no sixteen, just about before he's going to evolve to the next stage. Is gonna have his complete combo set for that evolution so let's say Litten will have his six attacks when he will evolve into the next stage to a different Pokemon I forgot what his name was uh, I only remember the Litten's name so let's say he evolves he becomes level 17 he evolves he will have a different set of combos it will change completely so he'll have different walking speed, different running speed, different jumping, uh, I mean jumping distance, jumping distance while running. So essentially everything will change. So once he'll be level 17, um, he will start off, off uh, obviously more powerful and yeah, different, different combos. 
So I guess uh, pretty much to end this video, and it's this video is unedited. There is I don't know. I I don't have um, what is it 3ds Max installed. Nothing. This is pretty much what I have right now, because I installed a fresh copy of Windows. I have a recycling bin as usual. Uh, I tried doing in Unity, but it didn't work out. The same thing with RPG Maker XP. I tried doing something there. Um, I couldn't figure anything out. Um, so I'm using the Unreal Engine, then I'm using 3ds Max, then I'm using GeForce Experience to record this video. And uh, I guess uh, a big thanks to Ohana 3ds that's the program which I use to import uh, no to import the uh, what is it the models animations and textures to Ohana 3ds and then export them to 3ds max then export from 3ds max to Unreal Engine 4 so a big thanks to the person who created Ohana 3ds for birth and one more thing though, um, I've seen a lot, I, I just like this grass though, it's, it's pretty cool. I had to retexture it because what happened is that the texture just spread it against the entire floor, but that doesn't matter. So I've seen a lot of projects online, let's say there was Pokemon Rebirth, Pokemon Fire Red. I mean, of course, uh, I think they already assembled the team, but... Uh, of course, I would like to assemble my own team as well. I guess the Fire Red project and uh, yeah, Destiny, the Destiny project, it's Pokemon Destiny. Uh, they have their own ideas. You know, like for example, you'll be running, you can spawn your Pokemon, they'll be following you. I guess I could have the following, uh, the following capabilities, but what I actually wanted to do was to prevent having Pokemon in the open world. I guess you could still see event Pokemon, so let's say there'll be a Mewtwo or something, you know, other events. But what I wanted to do was implement the traditional system when you'll have to run inside the bush and you'll battle a Pokemon. So how that would work is you would, let's say I'm running in the bushes right now. So you're running in the bushes then the sequence starts when you start battling your Pokemon, just like in the traditional one. But what would happen is, um, so your trainer, I mean, it will, uh, what would happen is, you would basically doing the same thing as you would be battling a Pokemon trainer. Because you know, in the traditional games, let's say Pokemon Sun and Moon, um, when you battle Pokemon, or when you battle a trainer, it's the exact same thing. The only thing you're seeing is a trainer on the other side. That's the only difference. So I'll be having my Pokemon st uh, Pokemon tournament style uh, action, but you would not be finding Pokemon in the wilderness. I mean, you would, but you wouldn't be able to see them outside, I suppose. Only for some event, event Pokemon, so let's say Mewtwo, Ho-Oh, Lugia, all those kind of good good stuff. So yeah, um, so I just want to end this. Like, if anybody wants to help me, let's say implementing a full uh, jumping animation because I'm having a horrible, horrible experiences with it. I tried many other tutorials. My Litten works, looks gorgeous. Uh, I guess what I can do is increase the resolution of the textures but uh, let's just work on the game first so I do need a little bit of help actually I need quite a lot of help <laughs> um, I need help with his um, jumping cycle now once I figure out how to how does the jumping cycle actually works and how I can implement those animations properly and of course everything will go easy now this this project of course it's going to take some time but uh, within let's say let's say I finished this Pokemon he can do he can do proper jumping he has proper animations he can do the combos then after that I'll be creating more Pokemon and uh, the project will accelerate in speed because what you could do here you could just literally copy the the way the system works to the next Pokemon 
because you would have to be creating a separate system for each character so if you have a trainer you have to if, if you make another trainer you have to implement an entire system for that trainer and the same thing for the Pokemon and anything else you make in this engine so I do need quite a little bit of help um, I know this is a, a, a pretty long video I suppose uh, maybe not all of you watch it till the end because uh, it's it's hard it's hard to watch it and listen to me because I keep uh, stopping and having difficulty speaking in English. Um, but yeah, um, I guess thank you for watching. <laughs> um, and if and if um, you could help me out, yeah, that would be really great. You could just um, comment down below. I guess that's how it works. So maybe you can link me down some tutorial links, or maybe you could ev or maybe you want to team up and we could work together so yeah um thank you for watching i suppose see you guys